Okay, let's hop into our editor and take a look at how to adjust your document to present a lovely proposal to your prospect. We'll start with a bit of orientation. You can see in the top left corner we have the Back button and the Save button. Each of these has a drop-down menu. This one here will allow you to choose whether you want to go back to the snapshot of your document or all the way back to your pipeline. And the Save drop-down will allow you to save your current proposal as its very own template if you need to. On the left-hand side of the screen is your section menu. This is a bit like a table of contents. Each section title is also client-facing. And if you want to make any changes, you can click on the section header and then on this three-dot menu. You can see this brings up abilities like duplicate, delete, or save to library if you want to use this section in other documents in your account. Let's look at our options for adding a new section to your document. Click this plus button and you have options for page flow, static, import PDF, and section library. We're going to go over the difference between page flow and static. Now that I've added this page flow section, we'll just give it a quick name for illustration purposes. The page flow section is a bit like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. It comes with an embedded text box, and when you add information to get to the bottom of the page, it adds a new page automatically. I'll just hit enter a bunch of times to simulate that. You can see here there are now two pages in this section. This type of section is great for embedding content tables, pricing tables, or text when you know you will often add or subtract information from the section. That way, when you add information, it will drop down to the next page for you. And when you take away information, the pages will adjust as needed. Now we'll add a static section. Just click Static, then Add, and we'll give that a quick and clever name. You can see that you can manually add pages to the section by clicking this plus sign, and delete them by clicking the trash can. Static sections act a lot like Google Slides or PowerPoint and are great when your pages are going to be image heavy or need a video, or for any tables or text that won't change often. I'll just go ahead and delete these two sections real quickly using the three dot menus. Okay, back to our orientation of the different menus. All right, at the top here you can zoom in and out, turn on grid for full screen, and use the undo and redo buttons. Along with the Edit Styles and Formatting button, we have this Preview button here, which allows you to view the document as your client would see it. We'll go over that a bit later and show the functionality of that page. And when you're ready to share the document, you click this button. On the right-hand side, you can see our contextual sidebar. And I'm not clicked into any element on the page right now, so you'll see the Document Details, where you can see Currency Settings, Signees, or the name of the document. As soon as I go out here and click on this image, you'll see the menu change to Image Properties. This works the same for anything you click. Here's Text Box Properties, and all the way to the right here is the list of elements you can add to your document. This contextual sidebar will change for any of the elements you can add to your document. And you can find all of those in this toolbar on the right-hand side. A quick jump here, and we'll click this image, where you'll be able to edit the image. And when you click on this image tab, you'll open your image library, where you can add or replace images as you see fit with the click of a button. You'll also see this tab that says Unsplash Photos. Here you can find thousands of stock images that are free to use by searching, and you can drag and drop them into your document. We're now going to take a look at repeaters. Repeaters are any element that you'd like to have appear on every page in your document. You can add them by going to Repeater Mode under your Document Details. Up pops this blue bar that says Repeater Mode on it, and I'm going to show you how to add a page number on each page. First, we add a text box from our Element pane, then click into it, and choose the Variables button. We'll find the page number variable, and once we add that to the text box, you'll see that it shows on every page. Once you generate your proposal, this number will fill out with the accurate page number and adjust whenever pages are added or removed. 